Hi, this is Shannon Farnan, and you are listening to your nerd side. Hi, this is Eric Estrada. You know what? You're listening to your nerd side. Well, welcome to the show, and we've got a few things to catch up with you guys about. A lot of things are happening in the world of Hollywood and comic books and all the good stuff. And if you ever want to keep up to date on what we're doing or what we're up to, this is the cool thing. We've got a little section to the side of all the upcoming Comic Cons that are going to be hitting us soon. We've got one in Pleasanton, one in Stockton, one in San Jose. We even got invited to one down in, is it the city? Uh, Los Angeles. Probably not going to go to it. But we are going to go to D28 this year, the Disney uh, Comic Con. Isn't it D23? So you know better than me. Uh, a little bit uh, later on the show, we're the voice of Superman, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse. The list goes on and on. He is like the voice of Superman, the animated series, even from Justice League. We got his chance to talk to him real fast in between his busy schedule, so we'll be talking to him. And then later on next week, we're talking to Wonder Woman. We got to sit down with Wonder Woman. That's pretty cool, too. Uh, in studio with me, AMV, and we're going to talk about stuff all that happened to us over the course of the week, because we got a chance to go into the, the advanced premiere of Spider-Man Far From Home. And really fast, we wrote a recap about it. It's on your nerd side. What what did you think of it? I really enjoyed it. I had low expectations of the movie. I was satisfied. You actually did a great posting on your blog about some of the things that we still had questions from it. Are we spoiling stuff for uh, our audience no, today? No, we're going to break it down to you that there could be some spoilers in this. So, hey, if you guys don't want spoilers, you're not going to hear it. Otherwise, right now, we're warning you right now, we really don't care at this point. Uh, I was a little, uh, I didn't think the movie was the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Well, what was the best movie you've ever seen in your life? Uh, probably. Besides your porn. Uh, probably the best movie I've ever seen is probably Star Wars, mm-hmm. The Empire Strikes Back. Second movie probably be Superman, the original Superman from 1977. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next favorite movie and best movie I've ever seen in my life is probably Tron. And then the next best favorite movie is Back to the Future. The next favorite best movie ever is probably Indiana Jones. And the next, can I, do you want me to keep going? Uh, top three or I was hoping uh, there, for. I can't do a top three. There's just too many. They're too good like you know, that. Let's see, lose people. We lose. So you were you sound disappointed when you came out of the theater. You seemed pretty happy. It was so. Was that about the credits at the end? And yes, there is a, a credit at the very, 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 very. There's two end. of them you got to see. Actually, yes. there's two. Uh, no, it was. I, I like the movie. It was a good movie. It's entertaining. It just it's very predictable. Mm-hmm. Very predictable. As soon as we found out who the villain was and everything, it kind of like just I don't know. It was all predictable. Second. The funniest thing was is that not funny, but it just seemed like they spent so much time in between segments, like trying to make them last longer. They should have shortened them down a little bit. Kind of ran a little too long in between segments. Yeah, and then there were some parts at the very end where it but makes it very interesting. Like they were finally bringing it back to the comic book, right? Because they were trying to do some original stuff with uh, Mysterio. I'm in the beginning, and that's where I lost his touch. It was very interesting. The parts where it got really good, in my opinion, which is the mm. endings, where it linked to the storyline, especially with... Uh, I was impressed by that. With Mysterio, regarding about Peter Parker's identity. But the pre-part was like... Uh, how did you like how they explained the kids five years later? Uh, so that was a big complaint for you for Endgame. Yeah, I just... I don't understand why that kid that was in their class just had to repeat one year. But he should have been already out of there. I don't know why that kid was still there. Well, was he younger than all of them? No, no, he came younger. So remember, he was he needs kid, to, if he wants to he go apply to college, it was the kid that was like, well, was you a, were a dweeb. Yeah, and he now was you're playing like, chess and he waved high to Peter. Hot. That's why, if there's any high schoolers or middle schoolers listening to this, yeah. be good to everyone. Treat thy neighbor as you want to be treated by yourself. Because one day they may be your CEO. Or, like me, they may be Aaron Fonseca in your life. Damn. Yeah, things like that do happen. Yeah, they do happen. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, I gave it a B+. Plus. It was one, it was entertaining. Two, it just kind of dragged on a little bit. But three, it did set up the next, the next Marvel Universe, cinematic universe, in some way. All we do know now, and I'm going to tell you a spoiler, it's in outer space now. Uh, you know, you see something that's in outer space... With somebody who's out there, 
And uh, I'm assuming it's a Kroll War. But the Krolls were bad in the Kroll War. Are they going back to bad? Are they still good? No, no, no. I think that's where how they explain how Nick Fury is everywhere. In the comic books, no one really kind of explains it. In the movie, so and that's how Nick assuming, Fury's so, always there. So the Krolls, uh, Krolls. Filled, the Krolls filled in for right. Nick Fury. He, well, uh, he did. Yeah, he was. Filled. I mean, so he, does that mean that it's always he was always it's always? Why know? wouldn't he? Logically speaking, no. I mean, why would it? It's cruel. So he works with them all the time. He's been working with them since of the nineteen nineties. This is a new routine. I mean, I mean, he didn't look like this was a new thing. Like, oh, let me try being on vacation. This is something that you could do, and that's how Nick. How does he know everything? How does he be everywhere? Oh my God! Well, I never asked he that before. Do that. I, well, that's very different <laughs> comic book. <laughs> right? Yeah. So the scroll is who really messes up about identity in the big war, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, and, and they have a very important message, right? Mm. Um, you know, with the characters and stuff like that. So I like that spin off, right? Uh, you're different, doesn't mean you're necessarily bad. And also, there is now who are the enemies of the scrolls? <laughs> it was the people from. Um that planet. I, I forgot the name of the planet. Okay, there. I'll give you a hint. They're blue. Uh, yeah, I know they're blue, but they're I forgot. They're in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I know, but I forgot It's there. the Kree Scroll the Kree. War. That's what it is. Right? I forgot. Very big. So See, don't worry, people. If you need someone who's different to be the bad guy, the Kree War would be um, coming out. And what did you think of the new Spider-Man suit that he I didn't, designed? I didn't like it. What, yeah, you what mean the, the one at the end? The very end. Oh, yeah, that was cool. I didn't like the, the stealth one. Oh, the set. Well, that the was the whole purpose. One, that was made by the uh, Nick. Uh, that was made by Shield. They made it for him because he needed something. I know they assumed so, down in yonder was kind of small. That was kind of funny. Uh, and what did you think of Mysterio? Uh, I like Jake Gyllenhaal. I would have liked him better playing a good character. You uh, just really like that guy. You get like that good energy. I you didn't want him to die, did you? No, I didn't. I like him. I like him as an actor. It's kind of amazing. You think about it. He went and one of his first movies he ever starred in was he starred in Bubble Boy. Remember? That's one of your top ten. One Bubble Boy, and he went from I one. I think bubble, you were a Bubble Boy too. Somewhere. Went from one Bubble Boy to another Bubble Boy. He's wearing a Mysterio hat. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> Years later, he's still wearing a bubble. Maybe that's how he got. Casted. Well, you know, the Spider Man is actually the final. They say it's. Far From Home is the f- Phase Three's final movie. Well, and yes, but Kevin then isn't Fig- there a contract, though, with Holland saying that he's going to get three more movies? They said supposedly it's nine. Oh, okay, because yeah, okay, yeah. it got leaked, correct? Uh, I don't know. I know he's doing two more movies. he does well, not the- have a shut mouth. No, and he's aging pretty fast, too. Do you think so? I don't think uh, He so. looks older. Yeah, he looks way older. It's MJ, I think, they're worried about. That's why they, she's never has really... It doesn't appear she has makeup. I think she's prettier without makeup. I saw her do the red carpet with makeup. I was like, who is that girl? She looks prettier plain. Way prettier plain. Well, Kevin Feige explains why Spider-Man Far From Home is the Phase Three's final movie. These are his quotes. And as we are working on Endgame, we realized that the true and the entire Infinity Saga, the final film of Phase 3, had to be Spider-Man Far From Home because, spoiler, we lose Tony Stark at the end of the Endgame, and the relationship between Peter Parker and Tony Stark is so special over the five films that Tom Holland has portrayed Spider-Man in the MCU that we need to see where his journey went and see how does Spider-Man step out of the shadow of his mentor, Tony Stark, and become the true hero that he has always meant to be. It's for the reason that Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home are essential two pieces of the same story, and it's not over until Spider-Man Far From Home is finally over. So can you summarize it? Can I get the cliff notes to it? Oh, God. Oh, no. He said that he had to end it because of the way Peter Parker felt. How Peter Parker was so close with Tony Stark that you had to continue it. Do you believe he was that close for such a short period of time? Yeah, he had no father figure. He totally totally filled in for him. Uncle Ben. Seems like uh, Tony Stark did a better Uncle job with Tony. Uncle Ben. Listen. Uncle Ben. Listen, I'm going to break it down to you. If I had a dad that was going to marry my mom, yeah, one of them, uh, back in the day, my mom's single, divorced. Well, happy, happy. So if somebody was going to date my mom, and there was a guy who made forty five thousand dollars a year, I could love him. Forty five. Okay, but if there's a guy dating my mom. That's how much you thought I was. Actually, there's some people listening. If there is a guy, 
that was going to marry my mom. And I found out he was a multi-billionaire. I don't know, but for some reason, my heart can just go out to him and I want to call him dad and hug him. And I just cannot wait to have children and name them after him and do everything I can with him. And it's not because he's not a good guy. It's, you know, when you're rich, it just makes you a really good father figure that you need to do. No, on a serious serious note, though, it's he, uh, he, they did portray it like he was really into him a lot as a father figure. They they attempted, but there was no enough development. I mean, listen, again, I, if I had to put my ratings for Spider Man, I would say it's IMAX. Yeah. That's how you need to go see it. Um, And I love how they have made. Uh, Mary Jane, Vida, right? She she's she's trying to slug it and bring her weapons and help out her man. So way to go! Are Mary you talking Jane. about oh that? Yeah, that was I, the whole dating thing. You got to see the movie and you understand where the the whole dating when he's dating his best friend. Some of it's like that was stupid. He's dating his best friend? What are you talking about? He's Mary, dating. whatever her name is, Betty Brant or Betty? You're talking about MJ? No, the other girl was dating his best friend. You mean, you mean Peter Parker's friend was dating? Dating? What's her name? The girl who does a newscast. Yeah, so what she, about She's going to eventually work for the Daily Bugle? Yes. What's her name? Betty. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, so she was dating a big deal. Uh, I just didn't... I thought that whole dating thing was kind of stupid. Oh, yeah. it was just cute. Yeah, that was dumb. I thought it was dumb. That's just my personal opinion. Well, Spider-Man uh, Far From Home... I think Ned did a great the- job, and by, that's his name, and by the actor of Jacob Batalon. All right. Spider-Man Far From Home, if you want to see the whole reviews and what we exactly broke down about it, it's under yournerdside.com. You got it right there on the website if you want to check it out. Also, uh, another good thing we got coming up is I wanted to throw this out to you guys. If you guys have opportunity, we're going to be at some Comic-Cons. I said it earlier. And it looks like we're going to be in Pleasanton. They invite us to come out. Full access, the Powerhouse Comic-Con 2019. Uh, July 21st, and this is going to be one day. It's in Alameda, Pleasanton, California. One at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You're going to meet the original Flash, the original Shazam, and who else we got there? Fus- oh, Dean Cain's going to be out there and a few other people. And we're going to sit down and be able to talk to them. Uh, if you need more information about this Comic-Con, and check it out. It's uh, Powerhouse Comic-Con. Go to yournerdsite.com and look to cons your nerd side is attending. And more and more are being are asking us to come, and we keep adding them what? left and right. So, are, do you think they're going to sell the Spider-Man sports bra now there at the Comic-Con? I don't know. I wasn't even thinking about that. No, you weren't? That they was, look pretty cool. That wasn't on my top ten list, but I'm glad <laughs> you brought that up. I, I don't know where this came from. I really don't. I'd be a good giveaway, though. It would be a good giveaway, especially with matching underwear. I'm like, how does it fit? Does it fit okay? And then i got to help him on with two hands. I know. Put it on. He'll yeah. look really cute with a bra. In, so I was searching the World Wide Web, and I found 13 canceled comic book movies we'd like to see adapted. A lot of them were in like the, going to get done. Some were green-lighted or green-lit, and some were about to be changed over into the movie like you know part one part two part three but it never happened so i'm gonna throw a few out there you tell me if these should have happened or you said yeah you know this is it's just stupid all right sam Raimi's unfinished spider-man franchise do you remember that oh so, no so it ended up with spider-man 3 yeah i mean the only reason why i love that movie is because when i watch it you watch at the same time in la Jeez. yes brand what Jesus, okay. you didn't Jesus see it. No, made you this saw, happen. You saw Fantastic Four. That's another. No, movie. no, no. Oh okay. wow. Well, right. well, okay. okay. We're getting confused. Well, here we go. Keep here. going. Keep going. So, Spider Man Four, and why they pulled out was because the director had some other conflicts and everything. How bad? Bad yeah, director. A lot, lot of bad stuff. But the way it was supposed to happen was, uh, so in that movie, the Spider Man Four, uh, it would have been John Malkovich playing the Vulture. So, would you like to see John Malkovich, the Vulture, against Tobey Maguire? No, the Vulture Maguire. is Michael. I know, but do you, so, so you think it's ruined already? Oh yeah, it needs to stop. No, no, continue with the Tom Holland series. No, move on. All right, Justice League Part One and Part Two. Oh, I, I do just because it was just uh. But it's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. I wish I did. And, and Henry Flash. Cavillis, uh, Henry, like on his Instagram, I mean, I'm glad he's the Hugo Boss model for the sunglasses. 
but it but 